What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a custom organ cabinet. Yeah, this is an interesting one. So uh, a local customer had me build a organ cabinet to fit this organ that he had taken apart and converted to be able to play electronically. I realize that not most of you are gonna need a custom organ cabinet, but this also makes a great modern secretary desk. It's a beautiful piece made out of a mix of solid walnut and walnut veneer plywood. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I will have a clip of the organ being played and it's just, it, it turned out so, so nice. I'm extremely proud of this piece. I think it's one of the nicest things I've ever built. And it's got a lot of kind of finer woodworking things built into it. So hopefully you enjoy, hopefully you learn something and hopefully you follow along with the build. So let's get started. I wanted to build this organ cabinet from materials I already had on hand, so I first started by sorting through the pile of rough sawn walnut I picked up on Craigslist recently. This walnut is a mix of five quarter and four quarter stock, and I knew I needed eight quarter stock for the base structure of the cabinet, so the first step was gonna be gluing these pieces together to get thick enough stock. So first I laid out the pieces on the rough lumber with chalk, and then ripped a straight line on one side of the piece with the track saw. Some of the pieces were too long for my track saw, so I first rough cut one of the pieces using a jigsaw. Once I had one straight edge on the piece, I went to the miter saw and broke it down into more manageable chunks. With the pieces in smaller chunks, I then passed them through my planer, skip planing them, and so basically I made a pass, flipped it over, made another pass, and so on until it was reasonably flat. Once the piece was kind of flat, I ripped the pieces to their rough dimensions at the table saw, and I probably should have done this at the band saw, both to conserve material and it's also a little bit safer, but I didn't. With the pieces broken down, I labeled them to make sure I didn't get them mixed up, and using one of these little triangles drawn on the top is a great way to do this. And since I was gluing up the pieces, the first step prior to glue up was jointing the center faces of each piece, and this gave me a really nice flat surface for gluing. With the center faces flattened, I spread on plenty of glue and then clamped everything together. After letting it dry overnight, I squared up the new thicker stock. I started on the jointer, squaring up two adjacent faces so that I was left with a square reference surface. And then I ripped the opposite face of the piece square at the table saw. So I also wanted to mention one thing here. You can probably see all the dust being blasted back at me. Well, it turns out the blade guard, which has dust collection built in, had gotten clogged with a piece of bark that broke off. And this is why I always wear a respirator, even with a good dust collection system. And after squaring up the face of the table saw, I squared up the last face at the planer, which I didn't catch on camera because planing is pretty boring. I cut the pieces to their final length at the miter saw, and then it was time to start laying out the joinery. So I used my Festool Domino XL quite a bit on this project, and I must say it is just a pleasure to use. I realize this is a tool that is not in everyone's budget, so I'm not gonna spend a ton of time talking about it, but it really is an amazing tool, especially for any kind of production shop. If you don't have a domino, you could obviously use just traditional mortise and tenon joinery, or even probably dowel joinery. So to lay out the joinery, I marked lines across the pieces that needed to be joined, and these lines are where you line up the domino's fence. And really the most difficult part of using the domino is deciding the placement and size of the dominoes you wanna use, and also making sure your depth is set properly so you don't blow out the other side, which I did do a couple times. With the joinery done, I rounded over all the edges of the base with a 3 8 inch radius roundover bit, and I made sure to avoid the areas where the pieces of the base will intersect, otherwise a gap will be left. After rounding over the edges, I did a ton of sanding. The roundover bit left a little ridge, I think I had it set a little too deep, and this required a bunch of extra sanding to get everything smooth and get all the roundover transitions nice and clean. 
Once I had everything sanded up to 120 grit, I started to assemble the base. And I decided to assemble the leg structures first, and then I could assemble the long structures once the legs had had a chance to dry. And everything was going really smooth until I realized that I assembled one of the short leg stretchers in the wrong place while I had already put dominoes into the long stretchers with glue on them and I had to cut two more domino holes on the fly. This made for a super stressful glue up and I was totally freaking out and my wife, who is a saint, was nice enough to help me out even though I was freaking out. With the base assembled, I sanded everything to 180 grit, and you might even notice some of the accidental through domino tenons, but I'm not even really mad, I think they actually have a kind of a cool look. So the last pieces of the base were the floating stretchers, which is where the top cabinet would attach. I needed to cut small rounded notches into each end of the stretchers so that they couldn't be seen from the front of the piece, and that's what gives it that floating look, and I had the idea to do this with a Forstner bit. So I used double stick tape to attach the stretchers to a backer board and then drilled the hole in the center of the four pieces on the drill press. And this worked out perfect and left me with nice clean notches and then I just attached the stretchers to the base using pocket screws making sure they were all really even and level. And with that the base of the cabinet was done. So next I worked on the cabinet itself, and this was made up of two side panels made of solid walnut, a top shelf also made of solid walnut, and the back and bottom which were made of walnut veneer plywood. So the side panels were 11 inches wide, which is wider than any of the walnut I had on hand, so I needed to do a panel glue up. So first I milled the stock and then glued them up into wider panels using dominoes for alignment. Uh, biscuits could obviously be used here, or you could even skip any kind of alignment method and just try to apply even pressure while you're clamping. I just like a little added security from dominoes, biscuits, or dowels. Uh, once the panels dried, I planed them flush and then cut them to final size on the table saw and miter saw. For the top, I needed a piece that was nine and a half inches wide, and I found a really cool piece that was wide enough and had this awesome looking sapwood, but it was too wide for my jointer. So to accomplish flattening this piece, first I skipped plane it to remove most of the rough surface, then I removed the guard on my jointer and flattened about 8 inches of one side. So do this at your own risk, obviously it's really dangerous having the blades of your jointer exposed. So basically 8 inches of the piece get flattened and you're left with a little ledge of unflattened surface. So next I used double stick tape to attach the flattened portion of the board to a flat reference surface, a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood in this case and the unflattened ledge just hangs over. This piece of plywood acts as a planer sled, and so then you can pass it through the planer and get the top completely flat. And then you need to remove the sled. So note to self, don't use a brand of double stick tape that you've never tried before on a piece this big. Uh, this tape was horrible. It was impossible to remove and it left a bunch of this sticky residue behind that I had to remove with denatured alcohol. With the tape from hell removed, I then passed the piece through the planer with the newly flattened side facing down, and this removed the little ledge left by the jointer, and also got the other face totally flat. And there you go, you've got a perfectly flat board that's wider than your jointer. So with both sides flattened, I cut the top shelf to final size of the table saw and miter saw. For the joinery between the side panels and the top, I decided to use finger joints, and this was my first time trying these, and they turned out really great. I used Incra's iBox jig, but you can also make your own box joint jig. And I also completely forgot to check how much space I had left on my SD card before this step. And right after I changed the angle on this shot to show you all the detail on how I cut this, my card ran out of space. So you'll just have to use your imagination, unfortunately. With the finger joints cut, I did a test fit and unfortunately decided to pound the pieces together with a mallet. And during that process, I broke off a few of the fingers, but did somehow manage to glue them back on. Next I needed to cut the curves into the side panels and I used this trick where you put a nail at each end of the curve and then put a nail in the center and then use an eighth inch piece of scrap to create the curve. 
And this worked really well. I can't remember who I saw do this. It might've been Mark from the Wood Whisperer, but I'm glad it's stuck in my brain. I traced the curve, removed the nails, and then cut the curve on the bandsaw. Somehow I forgot to start the camera when making this cut in the bandsaw, so once again, you'll have to use your imagination. I refined the curve using 80 grit sandpaper, just getting it nice and smooth and removing any of the bandsaw marks, and then traced the curve onto the other side panel, rough cut it once again at the bandsaw, once again forgot to turn on the camera, and then stuck the two pieces together with double stick tape. I then took the pieces to the router table and flushed them up using a flush trim bit. So the last thing to do was to trim the top shelf to final width so that the finger joints ended with one solid finger and I did this at the table saw. Next I cut the piece of 3 quarter inch walnut veneer plywood to size for the bottom of the cabinet and applied edge banding. So I used fast caps real wood edge banding which is just peel and stick and it was a little tricky to work with because the thin veneer just wanted to kind of splinter and break, but it turned out really nice in the end. I'd recommend using a flush trim bit on the router to trim it up rather than a chisel because I was getting a lot of breakage with the chisel. I cut the back piece to size also from three quarter inch walnut veneer plywood at the table saw and miter saw, and then I started drilling the pocket holes into both of these pieces. So the back is inset and attaches to the bottom and sides and top using pocket screws. And I considered using quarter inch plywood with a rabbit for the back, but I was afraid it wouldn't provide enough strength to hold up to the playing of the organist. If you build this as a desk, quarter inch plywood should be more than strong enough. Before assembling the cabinet, I sanded all of the inside faces up to 180 grit. And for assembly, I attached the back to the bottom first using inch and a quarter coarse pocket screws and then attached the sides to the bottom and back using inch and a quarter fine pocket screws. So the fine thread is recommended for hardwoods like walnut. Assembling the sides with pocket screws actually made gluing up the top a lot easier since it helped to hold everything square. I added plenty of glue to the fingers and also added painter's tape to help catch any glue squeeze out. So clamping the finger joints is a little awkward since the fingers protrude past the sides of the piece. And because of this, you kind of have to position your clamps next to the corners of the piece instead of directly on the corner. And adding these little clamping blocks can help a lot if you don't have access to the front or back edge of the cabinet. Once the glue dried, I attached the top to the back using pocket screws and then flushed up the fingers using a flush trim bit. I sanded everything smooth and was really happy with the way the finger joints looked. It just has a really cool look. I rounded over all the outside edges of the cabinet using the same 3 8 inch round over bit as the base and just made sure to avoid rounding over any of the plywood edges by accident. Next I drilled a 2 inch hole in the back of the cabinet which will have a cable grommet in it so that the cables can pass through the back of the cabinet cleanly. And the last step in building the cabinet was to cut a groove for a music stand. So I really had no idea whether this would work or not, but it actually turned out perfect. I used a quarter inch piece of acrylic for the music stand and then used a quarter inch end mill to cut the groove into the top shelf and just made two passes to make a total width of half an inch. This way the music stand can slide back and forth in the groove and it also makes the music stand tilt back slightly, which holds the music very nicely. I sanded everything up to 180 grit, wiped the pieces down with mineral spirits and then started applying finish. For the finish, I used Waterlox, who's also a sponsor of this video. Waterlox is a blend of tongue oil and resins and is becoming one of my favorite finishes on walnut. It really just brings out this gorgeous depth in the wood and also provides a lot more protection than a traditional, just pure oil finish. I'll have a link in the video description if you'd like to learn more. So I applied three coats of Waterlox with a foam brush, letting the finish dry roughly 24 hours between coats and sanded with 320 grit sandpaper before the final coat. Once the last coat of finish had dried, I attached the cabinet to the base using pocket screws from below, and of course had to do a quick strength test, and this thing is incredibly sturdy. The last piece to create for the build was the music stand I mentioned before, and again I made this out of quarter inch acrylic from the home center and just cut it to size at the table saw. I used a plastic specific epoxy to attach this little shelf which will hold the sheet music and just clamped it in place to dry. And with that, the organ cabinet was done.
hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. This was an awesome project. Definitely one of the most unique pieces I've built and I think probably the nicest piece I've built. Uh, it's just a culmination of a lot of the skills I've learned so far. I love Walnut. It is a pleasure to work with and I'm just so happy with the way this turned out. I do have plans available for this if you want to build something similar. They are available on my website. I'll have links to that below. I also have links in the video description to all of the tools and materials I use for this. And if you don't already, maybe consider getting subscribed. I put out new project videos like this one every Tuesday. And last, if you want to support me a little further, check me out on Patreon. That really helps support these projects. I've got all kinds of cool reward levels. I've just revamped it. If you haven't been back in a while, now's a great time to go back and check it out. Thanks again, guys. And until next time, happy building.